What's going on everybody, LK here, and once again, we open a book for a look into the past at unfair fighting game attacks, and this time, I decided to go really deep into an angle of games I basically have never played, so I asked Lord Justin Wong himself. What's going on? Um, I love the one you did with Sage Jam and Jam Croft. I saw some of their moves, and so I saw some of your moves, and I was like, man, I need to show them what is actually broken. Obviously, I play a lot of the older games. Um, I grew up from this arcade era time frame. There was a lot of things where these games had no patches, right? These games were like, this is what it is. This is what you get. Go have fun. Don't complain. Shit is broke, right? That's what it comes down to, right? And uh, I'm here to, t to kind of spit that for you. Um, so what do you have first? All right. So this is um, right here, Street Fighter 3 Second Impact. And Akuma is actually a secret character. In this game you actually have to input like a specific code to like get him in the arcade and everything like that and what makes him broken uh, at, least, at least for this one move is this that dive kick how fast how fast do you think this move is that i'm not gonna lie that looks instant like right instant, it's instant right like one frame type instant yeah so it's pretty fast um uh, another cheap thing is majority of times when you think about dive kick characters usually the dive kicks uh, depending on the game most of it is not um an overhead it's usually c considered a mid this isn't this is an overhead so if you're ducking you get hit by this so imagine you're prime play footsies you're prime play neutral and you're doing crouching medium kick you just get smacked in, in the head right away and you get a full combo there's there's so much hit stun involved that even if you hit from a specific angle you can always get standing heavy punch not even like crouching strong or crouching jab where you get like little damage you get standing heavy punch Right, and it does a crap ton of stun from just that one combo. Like, so if you get hit by two of these dive kicks, you're automatically stunned, right? Another cheap part about this, obviously we do have a parry system in this game, but the parry system is not as polished compared to third strike. So if you forward parry this, you can't punish me still. Majority of the characters cannot punish my dive kick when, you're, when you forward parry my dive kick. The parry doesn't really do anything. So in order for you to defend against this dive kick, you have to guess when I'm going to jump, right? You preemptively start doing jumping normals to try to counter it. Um, and there's even a more messed up scenario because of that. Third strike, there's obviously air parries, right? Um, so if you know about air parries in third strike, you have to jump and tap forward in the air right before the attack hits you to get the, the parry. For some reason, there's two different forms of air parries in second impact. So if you forward parry in the air, you both get pushed back. Like it's kind of like a knockback scenario uh, and which doesn't make any sense at all, right? The other command is down. So if you hit down, you advance forward and punish. So guess what Akuma's motion of the dive kick is? It's just jumping down medium kick. So because it's jumping down medium kick, let's say if somebody comes and attacks you and tries to preemptively think a dive kick is coming out and everything like that, there is a 70% chance that the down will register first before the medium kick and you will get a down parry. And then once the parry happens, the dive kick comes out after the parry. So you actually punish them accidentally for trying to punish you for trying to punish the dive kick. That they can't see coming. Yeah, yeah that, that they can't can. see coming. <laughs> That's why this is probably uh, the number one Akuma of all time. I know there's like Akuma from like ST and uh, you know Shin Akuma from like uh, Alpha 3 and even Akuma and Tekken 7 I just won the Tekken World Tour but with Akuma's skills in this game and how much damage he does um, and all the kind of like bullshit that he does with the mechanics and everything like that where the parry system actually favors him this is probably the strongest Akuma that he's ever been and this is also the strongest dive kick that has ever been with Akuma I feel like one really important thing that like I didn't realize about like old games when people talk about old games is how important it is you get a combo of something because like they don't make the games for things to combo it's just like oh it happens to combo where like in newer yeah. games they're like oh everything has to combo and it has to combo like this so especially yeah. getting like stun and like two instant overhead dive kick scenarios because someone's trying to play footsies that's that's crazy yeah you can't play footsies with this character so like anytime you're do, trying to do this back and forward like that you see a lot in, in street fighter like crouching medium kick you can't because he's the character that can just jump freely and you just have to take it mm. like there's really not an answer for kuma like 
even the best players, like if you fight against an expert Akuma in tournaments, even back in the day, mm -hmm. the counter Akuma back. Ooh. So he actually has no counter pick, and it's really because of this. That one, that one's really good, but I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to one up you. Honestly, that move looks like a glitch, by the way. No, it, it, it just it, <laughs> it's bad busted. Like. Just... So uh, I wanted to start off real, real, real strong uh mm -hmm. for this one uh we're going to guilty gear exert revelator 2 and a bunch of the ones i've shared for guilty gear have all been like my old characters super broken moves so like milia had the, the orb secret garden that's like some of the best oki of all time so now it's time for me to start coming at other people's characters because i haven't done that yet i'm going to go to a, a fan favorite uh your, your teammate is also a big fan of this character uh, Kizzy, also Ooh. a very big fan of this character. Um, I think you're, I think you're a pretty big fan of this character too, low key. I'm, I'm a fan of this character because I used to sponsor Lost Soul, right? So obviously I got, I got a root for my boy. Elfelt has one of the stance moves of all time. I want to say, for people who have not played this game, who are always like, man, she's so cute. Why does everyone get so mad who used to play this game when you hear people talk about Elfelt? We all, we all get triggered. There's no other word, and it's because of her trigger because she has a shotgun. It's a very, very, very unique stance. They have nerfed this many times, and it's still very, very ridiculous. So the rules are she can't jump, but she can like run around, and she can block stuff. Maybe it's going to pull up. I can block, no problem. But each one of her buttons, because Guilty Gear has punch, kick, slash, heavy slash, and dust, which I still don't know why they call it dust, but it's just there. All her moves change when she has the shotgun out. So there's a shotgun punch, a shotgun kick, where she has a little roll instead. She has the shotgun slash where this move goes up and she has a shotgun heavy slash which is her shoots the gun and a shotgun dust which is a grab to be fair to her this one is not such a big deal but everything else is a big deal so i'll go through each one as quickly as i can so step number one is the actual shotgun which is the bullet most video games that have a shotgun has like a recoil so this mm -hmm. one does too so you actually have to manually do that like you have to manually reload the bullet but one is it literally instant and the other is like almost instant and the level two one you see how she like cocks the gun yeah. here so this one is plus also extremely plus and you use this to basically get your opponent to be like these fast attacks are coming at me and i have to do something mm -hmm. and to mess with their kind of like blocking timing you would use punch you could do this or you could do this or if they're scared you can do like this and then wait and then do the plus one so she has ways of varying her pressure and both lead into combos. So you might be like, oh, maybe I should try like jumping out. So that's where this comes into play because it reaches really high. Because of that, you are put in a disadvantage situation and she just keeps on going for pressure once again. So since you're scared because everything she does will combo. So I haven't played this game in a minute. I still do see like anyone could do oh, this, right? Yeah. Right. Or similarly, that's just me putting a punch at the beginning. So it's pretty easy to build combos with this. So then your opponent gets scared. So you have this. This is a, this is a command grab. Unlike in Strive, because in Strive, every command grab you can't grab. Every command grab loses to command grabs. Uh, in this game, it is pretty rare for command grabs to be thrown invincible. But there it is. There so her, hers beats grabs. And you will take a really, really fat combo and go into like a game losing situation. Because she can set... The pine berry on you and it had the gun and it, she could shoot her projectile and be more plus and keep on doing pressure so she basically face, forces you to guess on stuff that's all instant that all leads into full combo so then you're scared so then you sit there and she command grabs you and then either does another 50 50 or unblockables you which is really really cool and takes a lot of skill yeah i i, I definitely see once Elfel gets like people in the corner, it's just like pretty much the game is over, right? That round is over, game is over, see the loser's bracket. And especially when you throw like what that unblock, what's the unblock with the little cherry bomb? This little pine berry, and then you have to time it so that you can get the level two sniper rifle. She has a lot of guns, so the, her yeah. level two sniper rifle has an unblockable on it. And there are ways to make it so the opponent is trapped in the grenade, and then you shoot it with the sniper rifle, and then it's unblockable. So, so it seems like she just has like. Obviously, she, it, it, because she's a stance character, she has more buttons than usual, uh, which gives her more options to do a lot of other things. And, and to be honest, because I'm kind of ready, like, usually when I explain some of the more complex anime moves, there's always someone in the comments who 
they're like, oh, well, actually, there's also this, that, another thing. So I yeah. tried to make it as simple as possible. But to be honest, the I think the original time I recorded, like, oh, how to how to fight this move. How do you, like, defend against this move? It might be, like, a 35 or 40-minute video, how to block this move. And then the entire Guilty Gear community came together to work together to build a document for people. Wow. Just for the stats. Deal. Just for the stats. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's that good. It is that good. I try to simplify it. Like hyper hyper simplify it, but there's actually a ton like how much threat there is, what your character can actually do. Cause some characters are okay at it, some characters aren't so good at dealing with it. How to get out? Every time they nerf the move, people have to change their whole strategy to deal with the move. Like this move was insane. Like how would you balance this type of move then? Take it away. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I'm hating. I'm hating. Completely, I'm hating. Completely, completely take it away. I mean that's. I'm hating. I, I mean, I, I'm I, hating. I said, I, said that, I said that about Akuma. You take that dive kick away. He, he's normal. I'm oh. hating. You know, you play BBCT. I think there's that character New Thirteen that they killed in the yeah. story, and then they took her out of the game for like three years and replaced yeah. her with another character that's way worse. So I mean, they could do that. <laughs> they could do that. I wouldn't complain. I think it's easy to make this type of move fair, but it's clearly it's clear to me that they want it to be like good because a lot of the changes they made. And a lot of the changes they make these days is just we don't want to take away like the fun part of the move for people who are using the character, but we want mm -hmm. to give more responses for the people who are dealing with it, which I think they did a decent job of. But man, all right. I mean, if you if you're gonna go to one waifu, I'm gonna choose another waifu back. Obviously, everyone knows that I love Storm. I am a huge Storm fan. So even in like obviously I played her in Marvel 3 where she wasn't like great at all. She wasn't top tier. I just like the character. So Storm in this game, she is more broken in this game compared to Marvel 2. Marvel 2, she's the best character in the game. She's actually more cheap in this game. And the reason why is because of of, of this, of this, of that button. That's ju super jump heavy punch right there. When you think about whiffing normals, you think about, okay, there's a lot of uh, whiff recovery and you know you can't press another action afterwards, right? When she's in super jump animation, for some reason it becomes rapid fire. So it'll look like this. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, so you see how fast it, it's, it's building? Dude, your meter is out of control. Yeah, right. And obviously the, the strategy after you build three meters always do hailstorm, chip damage, kind of the lame game runaway, right? Um, so now if you had another air dash character, so Magneto, he can't do that, you see? So he doesn't have that option of rapid fire, just normals, being able to recover it instant. Another thing that Storm can do with the rapid fire is if you're hit, if you're hitting a character from super jump animation, right? Like she can combo multiple fierces. So that, that causes a lot of more like high low mix ups, triple overheads, quadruple overheads and everything like that. Um, so it really makes storm that op and that's why when you hear kind of the meme of like all storm players do is just ha 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 right like you probably like james chen makes that noise all the time it's really because from this game for some reason i don't know why i try to like look up like google and like why does storm have this this thing but no one had a, a like reliable answer game facts didn't have an answer there was nothing explained so this is another sequence of like old fighting games being glitchy but making certain attacks too op because also this is so this is very active to the point where like even if you try to challenge her in the air the way she, her her angle of her fierce is she's just gonna spike you down because no other character can go away from the top of the screen like she can because she also has another option if you hold up right she floats so that's why she all she can also build bar in this insane speed and rapidly pressing like heavy punch. Wow, I have so many. So like one, do do Capcom characters go that high? Is, is it just her? So only Storm, Magneto, and Dalsim. No, not Dalsim doesn't have air dash in this game. So Storm and Magneto are the two only air dash characters in this game. So technically, only Magneto can really try to catch her. But even then. Storm has more like right, like better frame advantage normals, better normals in general, more active normals. So Storm just snipes Magneto out the air regardless. And Chung Li could get up there because she has a triple jump, but overall, she has the best normals in the game. You can't really contest her when it comes down to it. And literally, like Hailstorm is like one of those supers that 
is very hard to stop in general though she can just really just chip you to death all the time uh, just by doing just hailstorm build meter all day time over central she's definitely the best character in this game by far even though she's the best in marvel 2 as well like if there was like a matchup like a celebrity death match thing x-men and shiver storm would just destroy because everything in terms of combos because she could just kind of do this because of the fears you see because of the, that button she could just do stuff like that and it, and that leads into a whole infinite i see yeah because like when you when you had like them just standing there and then you super jumped i was like this turned from street fighter to i don't know because she just <laughs> like soared I, like they're just standing yeah, yeah, there yeah. normally she goes Poop, she's just gone and I, I i don't know like you just don't expect that from like a sprite game like that type of mobility oh, yeah. you know what i mean i mean this is this is this is also like capcom's like first iteration so of like the versus series so because of that i mean there's gonna be a lot of jank stuff they actually made a patched version of this game where they nerfed like the combo of this so like so on the ps1 uh version and the sega saturn version you can't do those type of combos but uh, so this this so this only exists in arcade ports where but that's the one that everybody plays on um even at tournaments and online and everything anytime i do an expert street fighter video my team is storm and chung lee i would get eight of comments like why you just run away all you do is press heavy punch even the people in fightcade get so mad because all i'm doing is just is this but that's just my strategy right that's that's just the game and people are mad just because they can't catch her that is yep. that is crazy that's like game defining it sounds like yeah, that, that's i mean that's the waifu right there okay i'm gonna share with you once again not my wife i think that might be the theme of this this video for me by the way is uh not my waifu i think that not that might be not wife. my wife <laughs> okay. yeah i'm coming at other people's characters now all right so back on persona so uh it's funny because I, I just said this it's hard slash impossible to get like certain versions of anime games so i don't have the right version but it doesn't mean i can't show off the move because she still has it mm -hmm. So again, not my waifu, which means it's this character. Oh, I I remember her. Uh, who was that guy? Banana Banana Ken, right? Yes. Yeah, so uh, this character is like a rare example. I can't say for all games, but at least at least in anime games, I think it's kind of common where like a game will come out and everyone will be like, this character sucks, and then a lab monster will play them for a while, and then maybe like six months to a year later, people are like, oh, this character is broke, like super broken. So. Is this is this move? I'm kind of just mashing, but this move is called Titano Machia. So this game has a, a desperation mode, right? So yeah. when when you're under 30% life, you the character kind of gets serious and they get like 50 meter immediately, 50 more meter total, a defense boost, and then finally a desperation super that they call an awakening super. Hers in the original version was one of the best, maybe the outright best in the game the first really cheap thing about this move is how you can get access to it because you only get it as a desperation super right but mm -hmm. this game has a combo breaker burst so like i'm gonna have mitsu attack me and then i'm like oh and then it knocks down so bro he had a mind of his own right there bro yeah so essentially you could just do it like right away and the move is split into two parts so when you do it you can like input things persona attacks so that he does them totally independent of her and then there's like a final attack where it's a full screen hitbox and this game okay. has like a role where you can go through them so yeah. in it's like a mix huh? yeah so in case that this didn't do anything to you so you know i'm, I'm kind of just mashing random buttons right but you could add a mix up there with the roll and as you can see you have plenty of time to just run up and combo this is a factor in every single round against this character every single round you have to do with this move because it's usually going to come from you're hitting her and beating her and then she bursts you and just does it right away and then you have to fight it and the normal best strategy the classic best strategy is you put yourself in the corner on purpose so that she can't four-way you mm -hmm. so that she just can okay. only high low you yeah 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 that is kind of annoying just to you have to deal with it it's like one of those it's like a low wayne like i mean the closest thing that i remember of fighting something similar to it it's like low wayne in the beginning and she summons the goddess i'm like oh my god i'm like gonna take like at least 50 percent for no reason because i don't know how to deal with it right? exactly you need a plan to deal with it once upon a time it, it shouldn't work in this game but is it gonna hit 
Yeah. So you, you see how I supered it and it went away? Yeah. So yeah. if I hit it normally too, it's, you know, it just absorbs everything, has like hyper armor. Now, once upon a time in this game, they fixed it. But in the original version, if you use the super to break the persona, it wouldn't actually break the persona and it would glitch. And then she would get the upgraded bull for the rest of the game, which is why you, you, you <laughs> never saw people super it. You never yeah. ever saw people super in vanilla is for that reason. So I, I can bring up, honestly, I could just pull up Lord Knight, Banana Kent, so you can just see it comes up every single round. You cannot actually <laughs> escape from this move as part of every game. No, that, that I, I mean, I would, I would probably quit. Right now. I'll be like, I'm not playing this game. That's not just a one-time super. He can like, it just costs 50 meter or something. And then he could just do it again, even after like it finishes the first time. She, when she is under like 35 is percent life and awakening, once you get in desperation mode, you can just do it whenever you want. It costs 50 meter to do, but when you go yeah. into the desperation mode, you get 50 meter immediately. So even if you have zero meter, you just get the meter to do it. So yeah. it means you can just turn around the entire situation if you burst properly, because you just burst them, you get the meter immediately, then you just do it. Because burst knockdown yeah. this game, which is which I am not a fan of. I'm not a fan of burst that knockdown. That is actually mad cheap. <laughs> That's a bristle. It's a very degenerate super. Huh? <laughs> it's a very degenerate super for sure. There it is. It's probably now in my head. I'm like, oh snap. Every every single round, every single game. Have fun. But what's funny is that like the next character I'm going to show you in terms of like broken, it's based also off of a very broken super. The one character that I cannot stand the most. And I never want to fight. Anytime I see the bracket, I shrug, I get upset, I gotta prepare myself. It's Yun. Yun is one of those like he's obviously a dive kick character and everything. He's always been a combo heavy character. But the thing is, it's his super. His number, his super R3, Genaijin. Genaijin is a custom combo super that he can activate. Um, him and his brother have it, but Yang has a different attribute compared to Yun. Yun Everything about his frame data completely changes. Everything becomes special cancelable. And the, the most insane part is, look at the bar. The bar obviously changes based off supers from many characters, but Yun's Genaijin is the shortest bar in this game. He can build the meter very fast, obviously by whiffing normals, he can build the bar. He can do a combo, it builds the bar right there. Like the different type of combos he can kind of build. So for example, the difference between frame data, this crouching light kick is four frames and it cannot be chainable. So like this is a link. So I can't do like crouching light kick and let's say in the crouching medium kick. That won't, that will not work. Um, it, you can only special cancel about special, special cancel it, um, as well with like one hit, but it's kind of a commitment move, right? And it's a four frame startup. So it's not even a fair, it's not even the fastest button. The fastest button in the game is two frames, which is like Chun-Li's crouching jab. But when you activate Genaijin, this becomes two frames, right? And also this becomes chainable. So you can start kind of like go from low and then launch them and go for a combo. Even if you parry it, you cannot get a punish. If you parry this crouching light kick, the second crouching light kick will beat whatever button you press next. So parrying is useless when it comes down to uh, most of Yun's moves in terms of Genaijin. Another thing about Genaijin is that he can special, he can, he can whiff cancel specific moves. So he can whiff standing medium punch into going to forward fierce. So you can get like the distance. You can even go from here from travel right there. So if you want to create distance to come in, you can do it. And the rule of activation Usually you would think, oh yeah, I'll activate during a combo so I get a combo, right? But you can activate at any point. If I'm here, I activate because you're scared because I become Superman at this point. Rounds, you, you'll have matches where you see young players, it'll be like round two, fight. They'll just do that because they know this this is an auto win a neutral tool, right? And, and the cheapest part about this is that let's say, you know, you hit them like right here, right? You do a combo. That builds literally 50% bar automatically because the because the less hits you 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 end the Genaijin with, the more meter you build. So after you build back your half life, your half meter with Genaijin because you because you hit them halfway, all you need to do is one more block string and then you got Genaijin again. So the purpose of like when you're playing a Yun and you're like an expert Yun player, your goal is to always try to be in Genaijin mode 85% of the round.
because you can just keep activating super and then build it and build it and building it. Let's say, you know, you, you're blocking, right? Let's say you're blocking everything and he, ha he has a command grab. And the cheapest thing about his command grab is that you can do this. Yeah, you get a... You, and the crazy part is you, can, you can't do this. You can do this, right? But you cannot dash cancel afterwards without Genaijin, right? So Genaijin gives you the option to dash cancel after the launcher kick, right? And another thing you can do as well too, you can carry a command throw as well too. So, so if they're blocking your crouching light kick, you can whiff a, a normal and then go into the command grab. So the normal completely whiffs because it's so fast and then the command grab will hit. So if you try to jump, the normal actually hits you. you it's so hard to not get hit by the command grab by Yun. They would love to get the starter of the combo like this because it does so much damage. Like, literally, look at this. Yeah, 50% off of just kind of like a scatter hit, right? If I and if I do kind of like and I if and if I start it off with this, look at it, look, look it doesn't scale. I get very upset because I um uh, because there was a rivalry back in the day between like east coast and west coast and the best west coast player plays yun and then i was like the representative of the east coast which i played chung lee so it, it it really was painful when i would get hit by yun because it's like yeah chung lee super super a2 is very broken it does half life but yun's genaijin does more than chung lee super with a shorter bar and it's more freestyle and the fact that she, that he can get a command grab and combo afterwards, right, is kind of the insane part. Um, also, the frame data changes, like I said, like literally everything about every normal that's like, let's say four frames, six frames, Genaijin reduces it by two by to every normal in the game. Also, you can even do air resets with it. So if you if, if, if they jump in the air, for example, if they jump in the air, for example, it causes a juggle state. No matter what button so because it causes a juggle save for what button like you can't even jump away from it because even if you try to jump away from it like this is this is like literally almost full screen so that's gonna just snipe you automatically right another thing you can do during genaijin combos for example i could do this a combo and go for a reset the purpose to reset it it because the the, the number counter will go down so the after combo you do after Genaijin, it will build 60% bar. So after the 60% bar, then all I got to do is one more block string. I'm back in Genaijin. It doesn't matter if it's hit or block you or whiff. You always want to be in this mode. It's literally Superman mode with the super. No, that one. I mean, this one is a, an outright classic. I think like the first, the first two is, is pretty, I wouldn't say niche, but you're like clearly an old game, old game where like, this is like the first one. Like when you boot up third strike, I was like, yep, Genaijin. Like, I'm pretty sure, but I didn't know <laughs> yeah, like Genaijin. all the details, you know? And I can relate, I can relate too, because people, the first two moves I shared, people would get hype. I'm just sitting there like, come on, man. This is impossible, dude. What do you mean? <laughs> yeah, right. It's also special cancelable. That's a mix right there. Um, you can you do you could do it from like uh the shoulder as well, too. If I do like this, you can even special cancel that one. Right? And that that launches as well, too. So almost any button leads into Genaijin. And it's it's never a waste. Like this super, like if you just think about like Oh, yeah, like, why would you waste super? Why would you just do it raw? There's never an instance where that super is a bad super to use. Like, you can always use it at, like, every situation. The only time, obviously, it's a bad, it's a waste of a super is if if you failed and you got punished for, for doing something dumb. If they parried this, this is two hits. If they parry that, then you get punished for sure. Everything else in terms of, like, activation routes, like, this is a mix. And you can even combo from that. You can combo... Crouching meme kick activate into crouching light kick because it's two frames and then juggle them and then start a combo from there. So everything combos and everything is also a mix up when it's when it's time to activate. And the activation window, even if I do this, you can't react and punish me. You have to guess. You see the young player do raw super. You have to preemptively buffer the motion and press kick right when he does this this animation. If it's after, the super will not come out and you can't punish him. And I, it, it kind of connects again with the. I, I felt like I said this for the first movie shared, but it's like the emphasis on how everything combos. So like, it's such a huge threat because of the type yeah. of game it's in, right? Like, you, usually mm -hmm. Street Fighter, you're, you're kind of getting like strays, right? Like, button into fireball, like 
button and to like tap like I, oh i hit you with some like light thing where like this is like oh crouching medium kick genijin oh i took 60 percent into reset and he has like most of the beater backs so he's gonna do it again like yep yeah it's an infinite it's pretty much an infinite super activation uh, when it comes to seeing the highest level of young players he has a move in there that reminds me of uh the next move i want i actually like you said this is not scripted so i'm changing my order only because you showed genijin the first fighting game I made a lot of videos about, like officially, yeah. was about this game. One of the characters, one of the takes I had in this game, which I don't think anyone could really fight against, is that there's one character that defines the whole game. He's the reason why the game is the way it is in so many ways. How many mix-ups they took away from people, how neutral plays, how much damage people do, why people's level three supers get nerfed. It is this guy right here. Bardock. Oh, I mean, I, I remember his level three. And what's funny about Bardock is when I was watching you talk about Genijin, there was a move you used with, with uh, Yun where you were like, yeah, like this move just ends neutral. It's super, super good. And it made yep. me think of Bardock like immediately, especially I, I, and for all the same reasons. Thankfully, Bardock doesn't have Genijin, but he does have this move. Yeah, that, that punch. I see that move all the time. So, uh, again, like I mentioned before, uh, I mean, actually, no, you said it better. Uh, in old games, there was no patches. You just have to hold that. And yeah. the only patch you would get would be, like, either a brand new version of the game or, like, a console version would have some fixes. But no one's trying to play that. Everyone's trying to play the arcade version. Dragon Ball has been patched many, 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 many times. So this move is nowhere near as good as it used to be, but the reason why so many moves in the game are like this is because of how good this move was. So this move, see it's like 12 frames from like this far, yeah, 14 frames. So it is instant, instantly gets over to you and it says it's minus five here, uh, but once upon a time it was minus one characters it did not have six frame jabs so if your character had a seven frame jab then this being minus one mean meant that you could not challenge that and there were a bunch of characters who did not have six frame jabs so characters like beerus for example and then uh cell uh no cell was later uh, i want to say andrew 16 had this problem even though he had a workaround he had this problem so a couple of characters couldn't challenge it that was issue number one issue number two comes from this so you see how he's like blocking, okay? I have my CPU to guard first attack only. So if anything has a gap, it'll show that there's a gap. So mm -hmm. this doesn't have a gap, right? Yeah. So once upon a time, this didn't have a gap. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> you could make your instant traveling move from anywhere. Also just straight up plus. In, in the case that they did have a fast jab or you just wanted to be plus, you could be plus whenever you wanted. Uh, this used to have it too, but they took it away also because mm -hmm. they left that in for a while. So that's problem number two. Problem number three comes from what happens when you catch people with it because you have an air version and a ground version. And when the game came out, uh, actually, actually, I do take credit for this. You can find this clip. I was the person who found that there was Marvel vs. Capcom 2 movement in this game where it had like float and like fast fall. So you're showing like storms yeah. and stuff, but yeah. people didn't use it for a long time. People were just kind of doing this. You know, like a lot of jumping, a lot of like standard anime air dashing before they started using like, oh, I'm going to flow and fast fall and all these things. It made it so it was really easy to catch people. So you could do things, for example, like, and then mix them right away, uh, right away. Yeah, yeah. Right away. That was hard. That was hard to see, too. Yeah, yeah, because Yamcha's there. So he's gone. This was this is like one I, I used pretty classically. I'd be like, I would boom, yeah. and then he's there. You just mix them right away from neutral. So from this, you just get that. Right? Yeah. So, because this move is so strong, they gave it to so many characters. So, so a bunch of characters already had it. They buffed it on a bunch of characters to, honestly, just give them a chance. <laughs> give them a chance to play some neutral. So, you got this with Bardock. So, Vegito has that. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> same, same type of idea. The difference between this and this besides like how funny this looks of him just like boom right yeah is that this is a normal <laughs> so you know you just cancel it into stuff where this is a special move you know it's core circle forward so he has like the same usually people call it assist to like whatever you want 
But this move, this move is like game defining. Like I, I called this move Bardock Fighters for a long time because I'm just like they just gave them Bardock stuff. Yeah, I, I remember because like I mean you just saw the classic Goichi and Sonic Fox and they were just do they were just throwing that lunge punch all day that clothesline punch or whatever you call it. And then I did notice that in the new Dragon Ball, like every character has like a really crazy like advancing normal now, right? And yeah, like you said, that's probably because it's from Bardock. Bardock's the one that really started the trend, started the the, the, the path. And I, I I know this game got like a bad rap for a lot of characters being similar, but it, it is true, honestly. Like a lot of characters have the same tools to the point where like a DLC character would come out or something, and I would just have my checklist of like this is all the stuff that's good in the game. Let's see what this character has that falls into this. Are there any like slightly different tweaks on established moves and stuff like that? I know, like, cause, cause this is the type of game that, like, like wh wherever the patches, you have. It's like if you're a competitive player for this game, you have to play the better of the game. Um, and I mean, Bardock was just everywhere. The punch and the level three were the, the things that you just see the most. I'm like, eventually, like, I'm like, oh yeah, I love the level threes. But then after a while, I'm like, I'm tired of seeing the level threes. That's that, that's that's how I, I feel about uh, like DB like DBFZ and and also i just know that bardock bro that punch really that that punch really did win tournaments for sure there's this one character that this one move without this move this character would suck so Sano, he's paul he's arguably number two character in the game storm is number one um it's very possible that you know tears can change um even with like new stuff now when you think of Sando, like when you like when you look at Marvel Three, he's kind of slow, right? He's very slow. He's kind of like robot, like big robot, like can't move fast. And it's kind of true for the most part. You see, like he's, you know, he's just like this is how this is how he's moves normally, right? And this is how he's jumping. He got these like long range like recovery normals and everything like that too. You would think like based off this, he just kind of like a like a tank, a brawler, a tank, right? For if you're first time playing Sando or playing Marvel Two, that's how you feel. There's this one move that really changes everything about the character, and it is this move. This is the, the option to fly. Fly is um, 214 uh, double kicks, the light kick, heavy kick. And with this, you see, he, he starts to move real, real fast. This gives him a lot of different options. So moves stuff like this, for example, where it's like has so much recovery, you can cancel this into fly. Right, so a lot of people will just do this as zoning. So it's like they call it spit, fly, unfly, spit, fly, unfly, right? And this is this actually defeats ninety percent of the cats alone. You could just do this. Another thing, what fly does as well too, is that you can like start poking. You can cancel fly at any point from ground or air. So you can cancel fly into the air. You can start fly from the ground. So any normal can be special cancelable into the flight mode, right? So this makes your frame data in terms of like, oh yeah, this is like maybe minus 10 on block or whatever. It actually isn't anymore because he can cancel to fly. Another thing about Sentinel's fly is that he has the fastest flight in the game. Every other character has like this kind of like long range startup where it's like they're in this flight animation. Uh, but Sentinel forever, you see like he just he's instantly in there instantly like there's no kind of like recovery type of thing he can just move anytime he wants another thing also is that he can convert off of just random straight hits in the air so a lot of times let's say if you get like this you can't really do too much right but he can cancel fly and get a combo and there and the reason why he can do that is because and other characters can't is because he has like literally no recovery on his flight mode like if because if you just do flight mode like this it doesn't combo so once you do flight mode all you have to do is tap up back and then you could press light kick and it'll combo from there so that's one instant of like kind of just like random hits out of nowhere get a full conversion combo so so now there's like this glitch there's this glitch called unfly so when you unfly with sentinel you you cannot you cannot block in marvel games once you use your your normal jump state one action you can't block anymore like you just you just have to take the l Right, so this applies for literally every game uh, for the most part, except for Marvel games. For Marvel games, there's this, there's a glitch that I don't know, you know, where it came from, if it's intentional, but it only applies to characters with flight mode. If you are uh, a character with flight mode, 
you actually have an ability to block after you cancel fly. So for example, let's say if I'm recording cable like that. So if I cancel fly in a specific way, cable shoot. But now look at this. Watch, I'm gonna do the same thing. I could block now. So the reason why this happens, if Sentinel gets hit in the air while in flight mode, that doesn't cause a hard knockdown, he gains a passive ability called unfly. When you cancel out of fly, like let's say you do press light kick and you do unfly, you could press a button back, right? And the, and the only way for you to lose this ability is two ways. You only get 16 reps that eventually runs out or if you normal jump. If you normal jump and now, see, I can't do it. I can't press a button. It won't come out. But if I take a hit like that, for example, now I have it. So it, it's, for, I don't know where that came from, but that's how they develop it, Capcom. So now you could do stuff kind of like this, for example. Like you can just kind of like do this kind of like little trap. And the best part about this is that send those normals do one point of chip damage. So even if you're blocking, let's say I'm holding back. You see, it, it does chip damage. Yeah, so it eventually adds up. Um, you never want to take it. And you can also even do really fun combos as well too with Unfly. So you can you can literally take them to the to the top of the of the tower to the to the screen by doing Unfly combos and combos like that. So that's another reason why flight mode is broken because it gives him and it also gives every other character a pa like that passive ability where they have another action after canceling fly as long as they get hit during flight mode or or getting hit by a combo that doesn't cause a hard knockdown state but sentinel is the only character that gets rewarded the most magneto and storm they have they literally have no usage of using flight mode in the game it's actually terrible so Sando is one of those characters that really could take advantage of everything with flight mode. Like you probably see like anyone that plays Sando on a high level, you probably see them go on flight mode in a one match, probably 100 times or more. Um, it's it's very rare that they just don't use flight mode. Like Marvel 3, obviously they changed it where it's like he's kind of more of like this brawler tank, um, which is probably why they nerfed Sentinel to the ground because they probably saw what Sentinel could do in Marvel 2. It's it's just it's an insane difference. Another thing Sentinel can do with like for players with higher execution is called refly combos, where if you did a cancel, let's say if you didn't have unfly, but you want to like do like some type of extender, you can cancel into flight mode, right? Press the button, cancel unfly and then go back into flight at the same time because you can you can cancel and keep going to flight so you can have unlimited air actions all the time right and so you could technically keep doing this as a staircase combo there's only two people in the world that can do this refly combo um consistently in matches which is yipes and chaos they're the only two players in the current like uh, competitive scene that can do this combo like i could do like one rep but they're doing like 10 to 12 reps within the combo think about it. You're, you're doing two and four double kicks literally like over over and over but in an insane fast speed if you can do that it, it really levels up your sentinel to the next level uh but another thing another cheap thing about sentinel with the flight mode is that let's say if i'm super jumping like the other character super jumping while i'm in flight mode look look how look what happens you see how he goes up so he controls yeah so he controls the air so let's say if you're trying to catch sentinel in the, in that situation you can't like because so he'll he'll anytime somebody comes up he'll just press jab jab like that and then you you just get smoked right there all right another thing that characters can't stop uh literally 90 percent of the cast hitting up back up back because he's so fast characters can't catch him so the only characters that can't catch him are like characters like that have like special moves that can like hyper viper beam or with an air dash but even then Sendo can just outmaneuver them with his flight mode because he look at it he has all this movement that he can that he can have compared to other characters most other characters if they if they're blessed they only get an air dash and it's only it's only one air dash you can't air dash like you can't do double air dash or anything like that like uh like some characters can in guilty gear for example Sentinel could just literally just outmaneuver everybody in this scenario right here like this. Yeah. So like literally if you, if you, if you follow somebody that picked Ryu, Sakura and Wolverine and you, and you pick Sentinel, you could just do this and they can't catch you. 
for 99 seconds. Yeah, it's 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 actually that insane. And the fact that Sentinel can actually block with Unfly, if, let's say if Cable did Hyper Viper Beam or Ryu did that full screen Shinku Duken, you can cancel Unfly and you'll block in time because because the startup for Unfly is one frame. So there's no like startup when it comes to his fly. So Unfly is also one frame. So you just block instantly. That's Sentinel. All, well, for one move, that made him like literally one of the best characters in the game. Without that move, he would suck. I learned, I, I didn't know any of, of this about about him. Like you, you see the results of what people are doing basically, right? Yeah. yeah. Of, with it. Also, I would say if there's any uh, accent core plus R monsters who want to take this challenge, because uh, I I did an accent core plus R Eno combo challenge. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do the combo. Uh, and there are people who are doing that combo, not that specific combo, but they're doing like stuff in the combo all the time yeah so i want to i want to see them uh i don't know if the bounty is still out but i want to see them take a shot they like the main theme behind like everything you kind of shared was I, I feel like moves like this they're never on purpose but i feel like in older games it, it seems way more random like it's always like really random things that all come together to make a move really good and the emphasis on like oh this gives you combos too so like it makes something that would be hard to deal with just like ridiculous straight up yeah i like literally I think all the moves that I, I did showcase, it, it really shows why that character is like top tier. Like, like it's like if 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 you didn't have those moves, then the character could possibly just be mid tier or suck um, at the most. But it's it's also another factor of just like, yeah, man, like there we we had no patches or whatever. Like it's just it's just like you just have to find a way to deal with it. And more of and more of it, more of accept it. Like you just have to accept that it's broken and kind of think of like like complaining about it is not gonna give you like a patch. Like you know how like people complain about on Twitter, oh this is da 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 da. Maybe there's a possible chance that that there's a, a patch coming where they can patch that specific move, um, or a specific sequence or a special move or like tactic. But in older games what you what you get on day one is what you'll get for the rest of your life like straight up that's like his own topic uh because i I'm, i remember jm cross mentioned we talked about that a little bit too about like oh it just is what it is for those type of games uh yeah. and there's like a whole thing between like you can't expect them to patch the game or even if you do get an update they're going to release it in japan first so you're not going to see the game for at least a year uh at that time or maybe more right so i think that's yeah. its, that's its own entire thing but yeah let uh let the people know where to find you you know i think we have yeah, different yeah. communities and all so you guys can follow me on twitter.com slash jwong 3 gs uh majority of it like twitch.tv slash jwong with 3 gs um youtube it's not jwong 3 gs unfortunately but you could just type in just wong on the search bar and then uh, my videos would just automatically come up since like yeah we've been doing youtube content for for quite some time now um, but yeah, I really appreciate you, you having me on. Like I said, I watched the, the previous ones and they were really fun to watch. And I'm like, man, I really want to show off kind of the broken moves that I think that are super broken. So I really do hope that everyone else enjoyed kind of like, uh, my little rants about some of these broken moves. Now, thank you so much for joining us and we'll see y'all next time. Thanks everybody.